hello guys and welcome to this new video in the game engine series hope you guys are healthy now in the previous video i talked about some couple of updates i did in this game engine so i was explaining how i edit some classes like the level manager and all that kind of stuff so if this is your first time watching you can simply go in the link in the description below there you will find the playlist for this game engine while we're building from scratch so in this video we're gonna be talking about how I manage to create this player right here and make it being able to shoot see the player can shoot and all that kind of stuff with many animations and uh, before we get to that I also want to kind of let you know what I'm what I'm working on so that you, you get a feedback um, you know I'm actually working on making these things more usable in a sense that I don't want to be always writing inside of my XML file to make my levels so I, I don't want to make it manually so I want to kind of move things right here and just kind of push a button and save everything and when I reload the game then I get my object in the in the same position where I set them to be and that's the idea that's why I'm actually working on doing this and you can see right here I can kind of move things but I am facing some couple of problems right now you can see since i'm actually checking if the mouse is inside of the rectangle right here of this container right here to move object this actually brings the problem that if two objects are on top of of each other then whenever i move the first one the rest is also going to be moving since i'm also i'm simply checking if the if my mouse is inside container of the current texture and that's actually a problem i'm facing right now so it's also going to be a good thing if you guys can share your ideas with me Maybe you have like a view. Let's get started. So now if I go to my player right here and I open the shooter, this is first of all the header file of my shooter. On top right here, I have uh, this animation state, which is important for me because I want to check every time which states my player actually has to, to actually fit the animation to that state. So that's why I created this enum right here and uh, it has like idle, run, jump, fail, crouch, face up and death. Those are the state my player can actually have. And this is also important because if I have a new animation for my, uh, for my player, it's going to be easy for me to implement that, to add that into my game. Since I'm simply going to be adding that state right here and use the if or a switch case to actually handle the animation. That's what we're gonna be seeing in a couple of seconds. The rest are just normal stuff. We have our constructor with the transform, we have our event, and uh, we also have this function called animate, which is the function that handles the animation according to the state of the player. And the move is just normal. We're moving the rigid body and update the transform of the player according to the rigid body position and all that kind of stuff. Now we have some couple of variables right here which are important. The first one is we want to know when the play, when the player is actually able or, or allowed to jump. This is important because if you don't have something like this, it's going to be difficult for you to kind of handle the jump every time. And we also want to check it feels, it, it feels like these two variables actually do the same job, but they aren't. So if the player is grounded, then he can jump. This is normally the case. That's why we have another variable for grounded. It's also important because this grounded is going to be set when we have the collision you know on the y-axis but can jump will also be important because it happens sometimes that you're jumping and you can hit something with your head so at that time you can jump but there is a collision that's why you also want to make sure you have grounded before jumping so can shoot is also if you want to know if the player can shoot this is also important because yeah when the player is uh, for example um because we have some time when the gun when the gun is empty we don't have munition anymore we can shoot at that time so we don't want to animate the shoot uh, we don't want to make the animation shoot when the, the the player don't have any munition and we have the is shooting this is important for us I could have put it right here but whatever it doesn't matter now we have the jump height and the max jump height so the jump the current jump height is the current height of the player where he's and the max is the limit is the top and we have this created I'm gonna be talking about this gun stuff in another video if I do that right here it's gonna be too long for me and uh, we won't make it through 
so don't care about this gun and things the rest is just normal stuff we have our animations and uh, we have the animation state variable right here so if I switch let me kind of close all these files right here so if I switch to my CPP file so the first thing I'm also going to be talking about this thing later this doesn't make anything about the fact that our player can shoot and things so those are some normal stuff the scale so because I decided to scale my player that's why I decided to set these values the jump height the current jump height is 0 and the max jump height is 20 and uh, the player can jump yeah we set it to yes it should normally be false but it doesn't matter since the player is not grounded it's gonna be set to false directly when we start the game can shoot yes this is normal because we normally have munition when we start the game this shooting no we need to set that when we push the button so this is just the destructor that's not important just have to destruct all the planner you have and to draw the player we we kind of draw our box around the player the collider the box collider around the player we draw the ah uh, this was actually the the container that was just for test purposes and then we we kind of draw our animation and we also want to draw the bullets of the gun because uh, you want to show that the player is shooting when something when when this when when he's shooting normally so and here update function we handle event we move and we animate this is how we do it now the moving hasn't changed we still check the collision of on each axis on the x-axis if we have collision we keep the player on the previous position he had so um the one thing that has changed is i had this variable called last position so i don't have that anymore that member variable because it, it doesn't make sense for me to have a variable for that since it's only temporarily i'm using it only inside this function right here that's why i can simply define a variable right here and use it for that purpose and also we move the bullets we also do that here we could have done it somewhere else but just wanted to do it right here and um, yeah the event so now you can see we always set the current state to be idle so when the player hasn't done anything when he's not running or doing anything we want to always switch back to idle and the idle don't need to have a force so when the player is idling so there is no force apply on, apply, apply on it that's why we simply use our rigid body and, and unset the force that was on the player so if the player is pushing if the player is actually pushing the g the g the g key is for shooting so if the player is pushing the g key and the gun is not charging so if the gun is not charging oh no this is if he's not pushing if he's not pushing pushing and the gun is not charging um, and uh, this is actually important because we want to set the position of the bullet before we render it that's why we have this right here we simply say transform if the transform frame is if is none that which means if the player is facing right so if the player is facing the right direction we simply want to put the position of of the of the bullet and this is the speed of that bullet so this is the idea of that and uh, if he is not facing left uh, right then he probably facing left that's why we simply go ahead and set the value to this other and can shoot is going to be set to true so now we also have this grounded right here so if the player is grounded and we are not pushing because we use the k key to jump so if the player is grounded and the key this key right here is not pushed that means we can jump because if the key right here is pushed that means here the player is probably jumping and it doesn't make sense for us to jump to make it possible to jump when the player is already jumping that's why we simply make sure this key is not already pushed and then we set the can jump to true the rest right here is gonna be just to set the value so when the player push D this is moving forward we apply the force on the player moving forward and uh, yeah the the flip so we want to flip the texture according to the direction the player is moving to that's why in our transform we have this flip right here and none mean the default direction of our texture that's why we have this and when the player is facing left we flip our texture and we apply the force and we set the state to run so we do the same thing for uh facing up we have crouch right here this is for crouching 
and when he's crouching he can jump when he's crouching that's why we make sure we, we set the can jump to fall because to falls the player can jump while crouching he need to be standing that's that's how we did it but normally in real world someone can normally jump when he's crouching but it doesn't matter anyway and uh, when a player is shooting up so we want to make sure he can jump when he's shooting up and here the state is face up so should have been face up now we have the jump the jump is uh, hasn't changed it's the same thing as it, uh, as it was for the warrior so we simply have like a variable we, we simply have our uh, jump height so the first even right here in which we push the keyboard on is to start the jump process because we don't want to there are two different ways of making jumps there are one way where you simply push the button the player jump till the till the max height and then start falling but there is also another way of making jumps which is you push the button and as long as you hold the button the player will jump till he reach the max height and I think that's a better way of doing jump so let's see right here so if I kind of push the button if I maintain the key you see the player moves till the but if I just push it a little bit the player also moves just a little bit and this is the I think it's a better way of making jumps because you don't want your player to always jump uh, with the highest uh, uh, on the highest on the max uh, jump height when you just want it to jump just a little bit that's why we have this first right here this first event when when we push the cable on this is just to to kind of remove the player from the ground so when when the player quit the ground that's why you can see right here we make sure this is able this runs only when the player is grounded and only when he can jump so when the player is grounded we simply push this to set the grounded to fall so the player is not grounded anymore now the second even right here for the for this key you know it's just to keep you know moving the player upward till he reach the max height that's why we kind of check right here if the current jump height isn't you know equal to the max jump height if that's the case then this will not work anymore and the player will start falling you can see right here and this is normal when we have the player not grounded and the speed is greater than zero then the player is surely falling that's why we set the, the, the state to fall now the shoot things and all that kind of stuff we simply make sure we check is the uh, can the player shoot if that's the case if i'm currently pushing the the, the g key then i simply kind of fire the bullet i'm gonna be talking about this gun later i simply gonna be firing the bullet and uh, you know set the shooting to true now the player is shooting and uh, we have the can jump to can shoot to false because we don't want the player you can see right here if i maintain the key he will only shoot once uh, he will only shoot once but if i remove this this is actually important because if i remove this the player will shoot forever as you maintain the key down and that's not good we don't want that we want the we want the player to kind of shoot you see and this is not good you see and that's not good we don't want that that's why we want to make sure when the player push the button he has to release it before shooting again that's why we make the can shot the false and in that sense we can have the control over our shooting process so and um, yeah we have this gun with charge when the munitions you know are just are finishing the gun this will call in even and simply recharge the gun but i'll talk about the gun later and my animation function as you can see it's pretty straightforward so if you know the, the the default state is the idle so we already talked about the animation and uh, you know i don't want to get to that right now we have like an animation puzzle that can pass my animation states and i can simply use these keys right here to access my animation and make them run on my player and here you see if the player is idling and shooting so this was this is simply idle but if he is shooting while idling then you want to run the idle shoot animation if the player is running but not shooting you want to run this one but if the player is running and shooting you want to run this one and so go on that's how we can make it for all our animation and there is nothing here to change 
but I'm still working on adding a new property to my animation which is the repeat because an animation for the death for example should never repeat itself because it's gonna be weird if you repeat the animation of it, of it you know of someone dying that's why I'm gonna be working on adding a new parameter which is repeat and uh, yeah, it should make sure that the the animation of the death for example will simply run will simply run on and then stop so that's basically how I did this so um, I can kind of write all this in a video it's gonna be a long process to of doing this that's why it's difficult for me to kind of say I'm gonna be writing all this with you that's why I try to explain so that you guys can understand and that's also the reason why I provide the source code in the link in the description below but as you know you have to be patreon for that but it's a good thing i think you will you will learn a lot by kind of you know by getting this source code and try to use it and change things around and play around with it and yeah so thank you again for watching and uh, if you have any question or concern think about to write me in the comment section below